All right, problem six. We have this equation, two times the quantity of x minus y equal to three plus the cosine of y. And we're told that for all points on the curve that the derivative dy dx is between two thirds and two. And we have to show that dy dx is equal to two over two minus the sine of y. Okay, so this is just gonna involve um, implicit differentiation. So let's first re rewrite this as 2x minus 2y equal to 3 plus the cosine of y. And then differentiate this. We'll get 2 minus 2 times dy dx. Again, because we're doing implicit differentiation, equal to 0 plus the cos plus the derivative of the cosine of y, which would be the negative sine of y times dy dx. And we're going to solve for dy dx. So I'm going to add this quantity to the left and then take away 2 at the same time. So we'll have the sine of y dy dx minus 2 dy dx equal to negative two. Factoring out dy dx on the left, we'll get dy dx times the sine of y minus two equal to negative two. And then we're gonna divide by the sine of y minus two. And then we'll just, let's rewrite this like, by factoring out a negative one, they usually have it some weird way. So we'll have a negative one times, um, I'll be positive two minus the sine of y. And those will cancel. Then we have dy dx equal to two over two minus the sine of y. All right, part B, we're told that y is between negative pi over two and pi over two, and that there's a point on the curve through which the line tangent to the curve has slope one. So we have to find this point P. All right, so um, remember that if we're talking about the tangent line with the slope, the slope is just equal to the derivative. So we're just gonna set dy dx equal to one and then solve for y. Once you get y, then we plug that value in and get x. And then we're gonna get our ordered pair x, y. So we're gonna get one equal to two minus two minus this over two over two minus the sine of y. Multiplying out the denominator, we get two minus the sine of y is equal to two take away two, negative sine of y is equal to zero. And that means y will then have to be zero as well. So now we plug zero into the original equation and solve for x. So we'll get two times x minus zero is equal to three plus the cosine of zero. which then means 2x equals three plus the cosine of zero, which is one. So then x is gonna be two. And then x is two, so then point P will be at the coordinates two comma zero. All right, part C. Determine the concavity of the curve at points for which um, y is between negative pi over two and pi over two. So, so we wanna study the second derivative. We wanna find what the second derivative with respect to x is. So then we're gonna use again implicit differentiation 
but now just take the derivative of the derivative, the, the, the derivative of this. So we're gonna use um quotient rule and um also you know implicit differentiation. So the um bottom squared, and then you have the um the top the derivative of the top minus the the derivative of the bottom and all that stuff. So then good old quotient rule. Two minus the sine of y squared negative two. The derivative of the negative sine of y, negative cosine, whoops, negative cosine of y. And then times dy dx. For dy dx, we just plug in back um, the original 2 over 2 minus the sine of y. And so then we're going to get 2 cosine of y over 2, 2 minus the sine of y squared times 2 minus the sine of y. So then we're going to get 4 cosine of y. over 2 minus the sine of y cubed. Now, we're, since we're restricted to this interval, that means the cosine will always be positive. So we're going to have a positive number over. And since the sine can never be more than 1, 2 minus any number whether it's you know one or negative one even, it's gonna be positive. Positive cubed is still positive, doesn't matter. And in either case, um, the second derivative is gonna be positive. And then that means it's gonna have, it's gonna be concave up. concave up for this interval. All right, last part. Let y be equal to f of x be a function defined implicitly by the original equation, 2 times x minus y equal to 3 plus the cosine of y. And it's continuous on the closed interval from 2 to 2.1 and differentiable on the open interval from 2 to 2.1. And we're going to use a mean value theorem on the interval 2 to 2.1 to show that this inequality holds. So show this is true. So remembering just the, um, what the mean value theorem looks like. For some value C between A and B, we have that f prime of c is equal to f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So this is just the derivative. And then we're told the derivative is always going to be, is always going to be between 2 thirds and 2. And so um, when you're, what we're going to see is that if we're trying to basically, you can think of this in one of two ways. You can just think of this as multiply or is getting this one fifteenth to be two thirds and changing this um one fifth to be two or just remembering that this is gonna the two point one is your b and this is your a so then you're gonna have f of two point one minus f of two over two point one minus two which means you're gonna have f of 2.1 minus f of 2 over 0 0.1. Now, um, 
see, we don't have this point one in here. So to, if you were if we were to get rid of this point one, we would just multiply both both sides by by ten, because that's you know or that's how you're going to get rid of that's how you get rid of point one, um, and then if you were to see what happens. Going, well, well, let me just going back to this. So we know the derivative is always between two thirds and two. Let me just let's rewrite this as. Um, no, I'm not sure what they would want, but let's let's put this as like this. Because this is going to hold, but if we were going, if we wanted to get rid of that point one, again, we need to multiply everything by ten, or by ten over one, so to speak, including the middle. And then what would happen? You're going to get ten over fifteen on the left. And then two on the right. And then this just goes back to what we had at the original the two thirds and the two. This is kind of a weird one. I don't really, I feel I wish they just were more straightforward in this. I guess maybe they used to want students to just memorize or draw the picture because they were afraid to, to, you know, to for students maybe to maybe like memorize their mean value theorem, but I think this is this one's even more confusing. But in either case, hopefully that they're not they're not gonna throw a crazy one or a, a weird one like this. All right, so um I hope that helps. Um let me know if you have any questions or um if something was confusing or if anything I can do to help, you know, maybe make this clearer. Um if you liked it, you know, of course, um Give me a like, give me some feedback, and um, subscribe if you have not yet. I'll see you guys in the next video.